Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment, and today I'm going to be talking about cast versus extruded acrylic. One of the most common questions I get is what type of acrylic do I use? Where do I buy it? Uh, pretty much anything having to do with it. So I wanted to start with a video about the two different types of acrylic that I use, which are cast and extruded. So first off, they don't really look any different. There's no, I guess, real way to tell them apart other than by part number or SKU or whatever that the company you're buying it from uses. The best way to tell what type of acrylic you are buying or going to be using is by looking at the supplier's website, seeing if they have a technical data sheet or specification sheet, and it should say in there whether it is cast or extruded. There are some websites that actually say straight on the website, this is cast or this is extruded. Uh, I will tell you now that most mirror acrylics are going to be extruded acrylic. And a lot of the colors, not all, but a lot of colors are going to be cast mainly because uh, it's easier to add coloring to the cast acrylic than it is to the extruded, uh, especially from a quantity standpoint. But let's go ahead and dive into how each one of these is made. Let's kick it off with the extruded acrylic. Just like the name implies, it is extruded through some type of form or dye. So basically you're taking a practically molten form of acrylic and pushing it through some kind of dye or form to get a sheet of acrylic. So it will have a, an extruded grain direction basically, which is going to follow the direction of the way you're pushing it through the form. For cast acrylic, they basically take all of the ingredients that they need for the acrylic in liquid form. They're going to pour it into some type of mold and let it cure out uh, and harden and whatever it needs to do to create that sheet. So because they're pouring it into a mold, it is difficult to control the thickness of this. So there is more variation. So from one sheet to another, uh, it may be slightly different. I am going to be laser engraving and laser cutting both of these with different items. I'm going to engrave some night lights so that you can see how each of them light up. And I'm also going to cut some pieces to try to make some phone stands. You will see that on most of this acrylic, there's either a plastic or a paper coating. So this one is plastic. And what I wanna do is I'm actually going to peel that off because if I don't, it's going to melt to the actual uh, acrylic and I just don't want that to happen. If you're cutting it, you can typically leave it on. If you are engraving it, I would take off the plastic type. If you're using acrylic that has a paper coating, again, I usually leave it on when I'm cutting. Most of the time I take it off when I am engraving. There doesn't seem to be a rhyme or reason whether it's paper or plastic coating. I think it just depends on the manufacturer, but keep that in mind. Before I get into machining these acrylics, I wanna get into a few of the differences just to give some highlights so you know what you're getting into. The cost. Extruded is cheaper than cast, plain and simple. Cast may be better for an actual like thermoforming process. Depending on where you get your information, you may get different answers to this. But as long as you're using thin acrylic to do it, you should be fine. Laser engraving. Cast, no question. Don't even try extruded. And I'll show you why here in a second. Laser cutting, doesn't really matter. But honestly, if you want to carry less skews and less different types of acrylic, just buy cast. Especially if you're going to be engraving it. If you CNC machine, also cast. If you're buying mirrored acrylic, you're stuck with extruded, I believe. I haven't seen a cast version. For colored acrylics, typically you will find more colors in cast acrylic, but there are also certain colors that are only in extruded acrylic. It just depends. If you want to use two ply acrylic, which is one color on top of another, you're kind of just stuck with whatever the manufacturer uses. And it doesn't really matter because you're if you're engraving it, uh, you're basically taking off one color to reveal the second color. So the engraving quality of the colors themselves from a cast or extruded standpoint isn't going to matter. If you're worried about thickness variation, extruded is managed a little bit better, but honestly, you're probably not gonna be able to tell that much. Which one do I like better? Cast, hands down. 
mostly because I engrave it. Now that I've done the quick highlights of differences, if you know of more that I didn't cover, put them in the comments below. But let me show you what they look like engraved and cut. The cut, you might not be able to tell, but let's check out the engraving. All right, so these are fresh off the laser. I will say that if you are cutting the cast acrylic, it does have a little bit of a sweeter smell. If you're cutting the extruded acrylic, uh, it smells pretty bad. So keep that in mind. You can tell just by looking at these that they are very different in the results. So on this side, we have the pieces for the acrylic nightlights. This one here is actually the extruded acrylic. I don't know how easy this is to see, but you can kind of see the grain direction in the engraving. So you can kind of see like the individual grain lines on this when it's engraved. And you can also tell that it's not quite as vivid or prominent as the cast. So this one, the cast one, you can tell is very frosty. So it's definitely like a frosty white color. It's harder to tell where the engraving lines are. And overall, it looks just so much better than the extruded version. Uh, same goes on this side. So the engraving's only here on the phone stands, so it's easy to tell which one is which once we go to bend them. But first, let's light these two up and see which one looks better. Okay, so I have these light bases that I bought from Johnson Plastics. I'll put a link in the description below where you can get these. I'll also put a promo code where you can get 5% off. This one on the right is the cast acrylic. This one on the left is the extruded acrylic. You can definitely see the difference in engraving quality just by looking at them right now. But I'm gonna go ahead, put them in their bases. I'm gonna turn off the lights and then light them up and let you see how they look. You can kind of see it with white where this one is just a little bit better diffused and better lit. This one on the left definitely looks grainier but again it's just hard to see with the camera but in real life you would definitely see the difference you may not be able to tell from that test but the led light does shine better through the cast acrylic and overall if you're not going to light the acrylic the cast acrylic just engraves better in general now i want to move on to the heat bending so i'm going to take the two pieces i cut and try to bend them into basically phone stands okay so i have the two pieces here this one is the cast. This one is the extruded. It's pretty easy to tell just by the engraving. So I'm going to use some blocks that I made just as kind of markers to figure out where to bend it. I'm just gonna clamp this down, heat it up with my heat gun, and then try to bend it over. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to time it so that we can see how long it takes basically to get to a point where I can bend it and see if that time is any different. All right, so being able to bend the first bend took about three and a half minutes. Well, three minutes, 21 seconds. Uh, that's just to get it to bend in general. I'm gonna go ahead, see how long it takes to bend the cast acrylic. And then maybe off camera, I'll just go ahead and finish making the phone stand. And now the cast. Okay, to get the first bend here for the cast, it actually took about three minutes. So it was a little bit faster than the extruded. In this shot, I'm trying to heat bend the extruded acrylic piece into a phone stand when I ended up snapping it in half. All right, so my allergies are killing me because I keep sneezing and now it looks like I got punched in the eye. Uh, but <clears throat> the this is the interesting part about the acrylic research that I've done is depending on the manufacturer that I've basically gotten the information from, some are saying that the extruded is easier to form in heat bend, and some are saying the cast is easier to form in heat bend. That being said, I personally find cast 
at least in my experience, to be easier to form in heat bend. First and foremost example of this is uh, this was the extruded. So it is now in two pieces because I tried to bend it and it just like snapped. You can also see that where it was bending, it's actually got a nice ridiculous line there that makes it so that if you were trying to sell this as like an actual heat bent product, uh, this is unacceptable. So went in the trash where it belongs. So I'm going to go ahead and work on bending the cast one. Hopefully that one doesn't snap on me too. Uh, it's just what happens when you're making videos. Expect the unexpected. <laughs> that part of this video was kind of a disaster. So here's what happened. So on the extruded piece of acrylic, uh, like I said before, you can see that line. It started to basically have a stress fracture and then it snapped in half before I ever got the first bend done. That's how the extruded went. The cast, I was actually successful until I became impatient. So this was my own fault. So on this one, I did make both the bends. Uh, so the first bend was about there. The second bend was this small one here on the bottom. What happened was I bent the first one a little too far. So when this sat down, uh, it actually leaned forward so it wouldn't work very well as a phone stand. So then I tried to bend it back, which uh, I didn't heat it up enough and I just ended up kind of snapping it. So the heat bending part of this uh, was overall like a fail, uh, just because I don't have a finished product to show you. If you watch me bending it and going through it, uh, you can see that the cast did indeed bend easier. It is easier to use for that. Uh, I just got impatient and failed at it. Overall, the cast acrylic did bend more easily and it was easier to form. Uh, if you don't get impatient, it will work better. Also notice that where I bent it, there are no cracks or visible signs of like deforming or bubbling or anything that some people get. So cast is definitely the way to go for me from an, a heat bending standpoint. So if you want to do projects with heat bent acrylic, I would recommend the cast acrylic. Just don't break it. Hopefully this has been helpful for kind of explaining what the differences between cast and extruded acrylic are. As far as where to buy it, that highly depends on your area. So you can buy it online. I know a lot of people buy it off of Amazon or eBay. The one issue I have with that is your selection is very dependent upon the sellers. So if you're looking for a specific color and you find it one time, you may not be able to find it again later on as easily. You can try searching for like suppliers from overseas if you're in the US, uh, but usually you have to buy at a higher quantity sometimes to get it from them. If you are in the United States, if you want a two ply colored acrylic or some different acrylic options like cast clear, uh, and some of those. Johnson Plastics has all of those. The only downside to Johnson Plastics is their selection of cast solid color acrylics may be on the smaller side. They do have some, there's just not a lot of them. If you're looking for some other ones near me, I go to a place called Piedmont Plastics. There you do have to buy the entire four by eight foot long sheet. So if you don't have the funds to do that, uh, they're probably not an option for you. If you look online, Canal Plastics will sell cut to size and they do have different colors and things of that nature. Uh, shipping acrylic can just be kind of expensive sometimes. There are also sometimes places in your area that do acrylic work that sometimes sell off scraps. And there are some places that do sell cut to size in town. Just keep in mind that if you are buying acrylic and you buy the whole sheet, it is cheaper than buying cut to size, mainly because it's easier for the manufacturer, or supplier, whoever it is. Another place to look for acrylics is Acrylite. So check them out as well. The reason that I go to so many different suppliers is based on the type of acrylics they have. So if I'm looking for acrylic that I want to LED light, I might go to one supplier, uh, mainly Acrylite for that type of stuff. If I'm looking for two ply, I go to Johnson Plastics. If I'm looking for stuff that I use in bulk, like black, 
white or clear acrylic. I will typically get that from Piedmont and buy the full sheet and just store it here in my shop. But hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into where you can buy them. If you have questions uh, or if you know of suppliers as well, leave a comment below so people can look at those, uh, figure out where to get some acrylics. And I know that people in Canada don't typically have the same suppliers as the US, uh, as well as other countries. So if you have suppliers in your country and you're not in the United States, uh, comment below as well and let us know where those are to try and help other people out. So if you liked the video, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I try to bring out new videos every week. And if you have ideas for videos, leave a comment below on what type of videos you wanna see. I'm always looking for new projects to do. And be sure to check out my Instagram at Maker Experiment where I share video clips of things that I'm doing, projects that I've made, and other items that never make it to the YouTube channel. But I wanna thank you for checking out the video and I'll see you in the next one.